Somewhere in a silent frozen laboratory, a machine hums softly at a temperature colder than outer space. Inside, tiny particles, smaller than atoms, flicker between 0 and 1, between existence and possibility. This machine doesn't think like us. It doesn't follow the straight lines of logic. It dances with uncertainty, with the laws of the universe itself. Welcome to a world where science fiction becomes science fact, and where the rules of reality are rewritten in code. Welcome to the world of quantum computing. Hello and welcome back to Project Notos, the channel where science, technology and history come together to tell the most fascinating stories of our universe. Today we are going to explore something truly mind-bending, a technology that could change everything from medicine and climate science to artificial intelligence itself. So if you haven't yet, subscribe, ring the bell and join our community of curious minds. Because today we are stepping into the quantum realm. Our story begins long before anyone ever said quantum computing. In the 1940s and 1950s, computers were giants, full of vacuum tubes and blinking lights. They could only handle binary logic, ones and zeros, true or false. This was the world of classical computing, built on the vision of people like Alan Turing and John von Neumann. And for decades, that world grew. We shrank transistors, built microchips, invented the internet, and filled the planet with powerful silicon brains. But then, in the late 20th century, a strange realization appeared. As computers became smaller and faster, we started to hit the quantum wall. Electrons inside those chips began behaving like waves, jumping unpredictably between states. At the tiniest scales, the whole rules of physics no longer worked. That's when one of the greatest physicists of all time, Richard Feynman, asked a revolutionary question. If nature is quantum mechanical, should our computers be quantum too? In 1981, he proposed the idea of a machine that could simulate the quantum world by using quantum mechanics itself. A few years later, at Oxford, David Deutsch took this even farther, imagining a universal quantum computer that could, in theory, solve any possible computation using quantum principles. And thus, a new dream was born. A computer not limited by bits and logic gates, but powered by the very rules of the universe. Now, let's go beyond the surface. In classical computing, we use bits. Each bit is a switch. It can be either 0 or 1. Everything, from your favorite video to the script, is made of billions of bits flipping on and off. Quantum computers use qubits or quantum bits. A qubit can be 0, 1 or both at the same time. This is called superposition. Think of a spinning coin. While it's spinning, it's both heads and tails. Only when it lands does it become one or the other. A qubit works the same way. It holds multiple possibilities until it's measured. But that's just the beginning. There is also entanglement, one of the strangest and most powerful phenomena in quantum physics. When two qubits become entangled, they share a link so deep that changing one instantly changes the other, no matter how far apart they are. Einstein himself called it spooky action at a distance. Together, superposition and entanglement let quantum computers perform thousands or even millions of calculations at once. Instead of trying one solution after another, like a normal computer, quantum computers explore many solutions simultaneously. That's why they can solve certain problems exponentially faster than classical computers. Let's take, as an example, something extremely simple, adding two numbers, say 2 plus 3. A classical computer would first convert those numbers into binary. 2 becomes 1, 0 and 3 becomes 1, 1. Then it performs a series of logical operations, comparing each bit, adding them step by step and carrying over the result. The whole process is deterministic. It follows one clear path to get 1, 0, 1, which equals 5 in decimals. Now imagine doing the same with qubits. A qubit can hold many values at once, not just 0 or 1. Instead of processing one possible sum at a time, the quantum computer sets up a quantum circuit that explores all possible combinations simultaneously, like testing every root before deciding which one is correct. The result, when measured, collapses into the final answer, 5. But the magic is that the computer effectively looked at many solutions in parallel before choosing the right one. But how do we build something that works with the rules of the universe itself? Well, that's the hard part. Quantum information is incredibly fragile. A tiny vibration, a bit of heat, or a random photon can destroy it instantly. Scientists call this decoherence, and it's one of the biggest challenges in the field. 
To protect qubits, they are kept inside giant refrigerators cooled to almost absolute zero, about negative 273 Celsius, colder than deep space. There are different ways to make qubits. Superconducting qubits, used by IBM, Google, and Rejetti, made from special circuits that carry current without resistance. Trap ion qubits, where atoms are held in place by lasers, used by companies like IonQ and Quantinum. Photonic qubits, made of light particles, promising for quantum communication and quantum internet. Each design has strengths and weaknesses. Some are more stable, some others are way faster. And researchers are still exploring which will dominate in the long term. In 2019, Google Sycamore made headlines when it completed a calculation in 200 seconds that would take a classical computer about 10,000 years. This moment was called quantum supremacy. Some debated the claim, but nobody doubted the message. The quantum age had arrived. Speaking of logic, technology, and the power of the mind, this video is sponsored by KR Games, the creators of Iridio. In this unique game, you'll explore a mysterious world built on the balance between fire and water, solving intricate puzzles that challenge your timing, strategy, and quick thinking. You'll also face intense action sequences that require precision and survival spirit. Every level in Iridio forces you to think differently, combining creativity and logic to overcome the impossible. Just like the brilliant scientists pushing the limits of quantum computing today. If you enjoy games that test both your reflexes and your intelligence, Iridio is for you. It is available now in early access on Steam, and you can find the link in the description below. Thank you to Care Games for sponsoring this video, and now let's return to our quantum world. So why does the world care so much about quantum computers? Because some problems are simply too hard for today's machines. Let's look at a few examples. Medicine and chemistry. Simulating molecules accurately requires understanding how electrons move and interact, something only quantum computers can naturally do. They could design new drugs, materials, or even synthetic proteins for curing diseases. Optimization problems. Imagine planning the fastest delivery routes for thousands of trucks or airplanes. A quantum computer can test all routes at once, finding the most efficient one instantly. Cryptography. Today's internet security relies on the difficulty of factoring huge numbers. A powerful quantum computer could break those encryptions in minutes. That's why new post-quantum security methods are already being developed. Artificial intelligence. Quantum algorithms could speed up machine learning, creating AIs that can train faster and analyze bigger datasets than ever before. If you have ever wondered how AI actually thinks, we made a full Project Notice video all about it. How AI works and learns, and you can find the link in the description below. And there is more. From simulating nuclear fusion reactions to improving climate models, quantum computers could transform every aspect of science and technology. But before we get too excited, we have to remember, quantum computers are still experimental. Today's machines have around 50 to 1000 qubits, depending on the design. But most of them are noisy and unstable. They make errors, a lot of them. That's why researchers are working on something called quantum error correction. By linking multiple physical qubits together, they can create a single logical qubit that can recover from small mistakes automatically. The dream is to build fault-tolerant quantum computers, stable enough to run huge calculations for hours or days without collapsing. To do that, we might need millions of physical qubits. It's a massive challenge, but so was building the first transistor or landing on the moon, and step by step, Progress continues. What's next? People are already dreaming of the quantum internet, a network where information is transmitted using entangled photons instead of electrical signals. This would mean unbreakable encryption, instant data links, and global quantum communication. In the next 10 to 20 years, we might see hybrid systems where classical and quantum computers work together. The classical machine handles logic and organization, while the quantum side tackles the most complex calculations. Governments and tech giants are investing billions. In 2023, the European Union, the United States, China, and Japan all launched national quantum initiatives. Quantum computing won't replace normal computers, but it will redefine what's possible to compute. It's a new layer of technology, one that works with the laws of physics, not against them. Before we wrap up, here are some of the most amazing, funny, and surprising curiosities about the world of quantum computing. The word quantum means how much in Latin. 
it's the smallest possible piece of something, like energy or matter. Some quantum computers need no electricity in their core. They use superconductors and magnetic fields instead of wires. Quantum algorithms can be so efficient that they turn impossible tasks into quick solutions, but only for specific problems. They don't work great for everything. A qubit can be made from almost anything – electrons, photons, ions, or even diamond effects. In 2022, researchers used quantum teleportation to send data across 27 miles – not objects, but information itself. Quantum physics does not forbid time travel automatically. It just makes it extremely unlikely, at least for now. Since the dawn of civilization, humanity has built tools to understand the world. The Habacus, the telescope, the compass, and many others. Now, for the first time, we are building a tool to understand reality itself. Quantum computers don't process data, they process possibility. We are only at the beginning of this journey. But one day, these machines might help us solve the deepest mysteries of life energy and existence. And maybe, just maybe, they'll teach us that we, too, are part of the quantum code. Thank you for watching Project Nomos. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of quantum computers, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay curious, stay inspired, and see you in the next video.